Hello and welcome to the channel everybody. In this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Stadium Pro Hollywood USB microphone. Uh, now I wouldn't normally do a review of it, I didn't want it, but when I was looking at buying it, there was no other review out there. So, uh, decided to do one because uh, it would have helped me, uh, but you're listening to it right now. Uh, how does it sound to you? Uh, but I do want to go over a few things, uh, a few things that annoyed me, uh, but a few things that I kind of liked as well. Now this is the Stadium Pro Hollywood USB microphone, it comes in that box there. I got it from JB Hi-Fi for uh, 148 Australian dollars. Uh, so it's a little bit cheaper than most USB microphones out there, other than like uh, the Blue Snowball and things like that. Uh, my Rode NT USB, which I will be comparing it to very soon, uh, that I believe retails in Australia for a bit over 200. So this is uh, much cheaper. This, however, does have a few features that the Rode NT USB does not. Now, you can have polar pattern selectable. You can use cardioid, stereo, bi-directional or omnidirectional. Now cardioid is just out the front of the microphone going towards you, stereo is to the sides and bi-directional is uh, the front of the microphone and the back of the microphone. Uh, good for you if you're doing podcasts or something. And omnidirectional is just takes the sound from everywhere. Now it does have a 3.5mm headphone jack, so you can listen in to exactly what that's recording if you want to do, which I normally do on my Rode NT USB. I'm probably not going to in this setup in my sim room here where I normally do race car stuff. It does have a little knob on it to adjust the volume of what you're hearing out of that headphone jack. And the other knob on top of it, which is actually below it for me because I've got it mounted upside down, uh, is for the gain. Another thing that the my Rode NT USB does not have. I kind of glanced over something that I wanted to say. So with these polar pattern selectable things, you've actually got four LEDs uh, on the top here, and that tells you uh, which polar pattern you're in. Actually, I can probably show you here. So, so uh, different lights light up depending on your pattern. Uh, you've also got a little button under here. It's got uh, LEDs in the base here that shoot light going down. Uh, you can change the colors between blue, white, yellow, pink slash purple maybe, or green. It's a full metal body. It uses a USB-C to go into a USB type A in the computer. Uh, 1.8 meters in length is the cable. Now normally straight out of the box, you're going to get this stand here. Most people mount theirs on a table and just have it in front of them and they talk to it sitting on the desk there. I'm not a big fan of that personally. I like it on the boom arm, but I'll get on onto that in a second. This mount here is not bad. It, it's good popper steel. That's, that's not plastic. Uh, it's got a little wheel at the back here, so you can actually adjust the angle of that, which is cool. Uh, not that I'm ever going to use it, but most people will. Now, the boom arm. The problem. In fact, my biggest problem with this microphone, when I opened the box, many swears came out my mouth <laughs> when I tried to mount it to this boom arm. So when you pull it out, see, it actually has it advertised here. So, metal body and detachable stand detachable stand so if it's promoting detachable stand then of course it, it means you can mount it to other things like like a boom arm however 
they decide not to actually put any adapter in the box to mount onto anything other than the stand it comes with, which is massive. Look at that. Like, no boom arm, boom pole, no, it comes with the, well, some might, but most the people, streamers and all that are going to be using, uh, none of them have that thread. That's way massive. And it doesn't come with an adapter. And to not come with that is insane. I've had a few USB microphones and every single one of them has had one in the box. This does not. I need this for some, and I couldn't mount it and I couldn't use the stand for what I wanted to do. And so I needed to mount it to the boom and I didn't have this adapter. It's insane, it's stupid. Uh, I hate it. Uh, that it doesn't come with that. It should come with that. So, what I had to do, I just bought one of these. Now, Stadium, the same brand, make this shock mount, and guess what? See in there. Actually, I pulled out. See that? I saw it had an adapter in there. I literally bought this shock mount just for that adapter. This comes with it. Why doesn't that? I mean, this shock mount, their own brand, won't even fit on this anyway. Uh, now, this is about 30 centimeters away from me, which isn't ideal for a microphone. Really, you should be up like this. Uh, it'll normally sound better. Uh, and I've got to fix this. Uh, this has to come down to me and to the side a bit. But that's just how it is at the moment. That's how I'm mounting it. It does not come with a pop filter. That's extra as well. Just like your adapter that you have to get to mount to a boom pole. Now let's switch over to this and see what kind of sounds you'd be getting out of a gaming headset compared to a USB microphone. Boom boom. Ah, so now... We are on the Hi HypoX, <laughs> HypoX Cloud 2 microphone. Uh, you can definitely tell that the quality dropped a little bit there. Sounds a little bit more gamerish, streamerish, I guess you could say. Uh, whereas the Stadium Pro sounds a little bit more natural. That's the kind of step up you're gonna get going from a normal gaming headset to some even a cheap USB microphone uh, in saying that you've got the snowballs at probably half this cost well not just but I don't recommend those personally uh, I'm not a big fan of the sound uh, I don't know if that's just me each to their own however testing testing one two three four this is the Rode NT-USB microphone. This has got the pop filter in front of it. The Stadium Pro does not have a pop filter. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. This is the Stadium Pro Hollywood, currently in cardioid pattern. Uh, I can change that. Now I can change it to bi-directional which is what it's currently on right now. I can change it to stereo, which is what it's currently on right now. And I can change it to omnidirectional. When it's on omnidirectional, you can probably hear a little bit more of the button pressing. Let me just, while I'm pressing the buttons, change it back to cardioid. Now back on cardioid. Yeah. Now this is the Rode NT-USB again. Uh, let's tap some keys. I can't 
change the direction on the road NT USB. So this is just what it is. Enter, enter, enter. I, I did just notice that maybe the gain is up a little bit more on the road NT USB. So let me just change that. So now we're back on the Stadium Pro Hollywood. And oh no, it's about the same, I think. Uh, I might turn up just a touch. There we are. Uh, even go fully, fully, fully. Is that fully? I think it is. I don't think that changed anything. Gain is full, gain is full, gain is halfway, gain is low, gain is low. Yeah, that changed something. Gain is uh, medium, gain is full, gain is full. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Uh, it's not showing up too much, to be honest, on my little graph thing over here. All right, back now on the Stadium Pro Hollywood. Personally, just knowing it didn't come with that adapter, if I knew it didn't come with that adapter, to be honest, I wouldn't have bought it. I would have just went and got a different mic. <laughs> because it's just too much of a hassle to go and get that. I just... So anyway, that's uh, what it's like with the sound quality of the Stadium Pro Hollywood USB microphone. Uh, hopefully this has helped you. If it has, give us a thumbs up. Uh, thanks for watching this video, everybody. Hit that like button if you'd like to subscribe for more videos, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>